Hey all welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to set up automated database backups with Coolify and also how to back it up with, you know, an S3 compatible object storage. So I've been using Coolify to host my sites for the past several months. Database backups are a crucial part of disaster recovery, providing a checkpoint from which to restore your data in case something bad happens, whether you corrupt your database or you lose access to your server or whatever it is. In this post, we'll walk through setting up automated backups with Coolify. Okay, so let's start off with how to create database backups with Coolify. So we're assuming that you've created your database on your server using Coolify's built-in database creator. This is going to ensure it's set up in a standard way that Coolify understands, like how to access it, where it's located on disk, etc. I believe there is a way to also create a database yourself, and then you just have to kind of configure it in Coolify so it knows like, you know, what port is it on? How do I access it? If it's a container, how do I access the container? Stuff like that. Um, but in general, the you know paved road is to just use Coolify's built-in database creator. This is how I built my Postgres databases. It works well. Um, so we're gonna assume you've done something like this. And if you haven't, at least you've configured it so Coolify understands where that database is. Now, Coolify currently supports backups for Postgres, MySQL, MariaDB, and MongoDB according to the official docs. And my guess is they're happy to like add additional databases if there's enough demand. So if you want, you know, message the Coolify guy on uh, Twitter or something. And then to set up database backups, basically you're going to navigate to your Coolify project and select your database, click the backups tab and create a scheduled backup, which I'll show you how to do in a second. And then once the scheduled backup is created, it will automatically create a backup based on the configuration. And we'll talk more about, you know, the things that you can configure um, a little later in this post. You also have the option to create a backup immediately by clicking into the backup that you've created above and clicking backup now. And so let me show you what this looks like. So here I'm in my Coolify instance, I'm using Coolify Cloud. So let me go to my project, go to my production, and then I have my little Postgres database here. Let me make this bigger so you can see it. Okay, now I'm gonna click into my database and I'm gonna go into backups, this tab here. And you'll see that I've already created um, a backup. Now, if you wanna create one, they'll just click the add button here and then it'll ask you for a frequency and some whether you're gonna to save to S3 or not. And we'll talk about it in a second. So that's how you create one, but let's actually go into the one that I've already configured and to show you kind of what it looks like. And so there's a bunch of configuration here, which we are gonna talk about um, a bit later, but at the bottom, you can see all of the past uh, backups that I've created, as well as like where it's stored on disk, when it was created, how long it took, what sizes, stuff like that. Um, and then you have the ability to say what frequency to go, what databases to back up, um, and then some retention options as well. The thing I wanna show you right now though, is that you know mine is currently doing a weekly frequency, but if you, for some reason, wanna back up right now, you can click this button here to back up now, and it will say that it's queued, and now we can see that it's in progress doing something. And finally, it says success, and it says it's in both local storage and S3 storage. Cool, so now let's talk about setting up automated database backups. So Coolify does allow for automated backups on a cron, which is basically a recurring time-based schedule. So, you know, in my instance, I was doing weekly, but there are other configurations that you can put as well. For example, you can do every minute. I'm not really sure why you would back up a database every minute, but I guess some people might want that. Um, hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly, or really anything you can put in a cron expression. These are like little helpers. Um, for a more like human readable time, um, but anything you can put in a cron uh, seems valid. And as I showed you, like, you know, whenever you're doing things on a schedule, um, you always need to worry a little bit about like, is this gonna overload memory if I store too much of them? Um, but you can set retention limits for both um, local and S3 um, by going here, and you can have different ones for local and for um, S3 storage retention. And I'm actually gonna change this here because um, zero means unlimited, and I don't really want unlimited storage. So I'm just gonna make this 90 and then save it um, and that'll be saved. And the idea is basically the first one of these that gets triggered will cause um, the database storage to be cleaned out, I guess. So really it's an or, right? So if number of backups to keep is larger than this or the days to keep is too long or the max storage is too long, then it's gonna go in and clean up the ones that no longer fit the rules, which you can see here um, like that. And then last thing to point out here is, oh yeah, the frequency, um, I'm gonna try to put a patch in to make it so that you can see what frequencies are allowed here, but you don't have to refer to my post on this. You can just go to add, and then if you click this or go over the tooltip, it does show you all of the um, valid options for this cron frequency. So you don't have to remember this or write it down anywhere. Okay, so for storing database backups, 
So by default, Coolify will store the backups locally on your server. Now, for many indie use cases, this is fine and gives you an ability to restore to a previous checkpoint if something bad were to occur. However, if a true disaster occurs where you lose access to your server entirely, all the backups would be lost as well. Now, to solve for this, many people choose to upload their backups directly to an object storage like S3, which is a relatively cheap way to store large files. Because this storage is hosted independently of your server, it can be used to restore your database even if your server becomes unreachable. Because really what you could do is set up a new server, load all of your apps on it, and then you just pull down you know, the backup from wherever else you're storing it and load it in, and that's how you've recovered from disaster. And Coolify does have built-in S3 connection capabilities, so you can have the database backups uploaded directly to your own S3 compatible object storage without really doing anything else except for a little bit of configuration. And to configure this, you can enable an S3 compatible object storage on your cloud of choice. I am currently using Hetzner object storage, and you can sign up with my link to get $20 in credits. I really like Hetzner. Um, and so here's my you know, object storage thing. Here's one of my backups that I have. Let me refresh this. Okay, here's the one that I just did as part of the demo of this video, it's created four minutes ago. And so we can see that Coolify is triggering this and storing it in S3. And so I'm using Hetzner, but like basically every cloud has an S3 compatible object storage. Um, so whatever it is, create it, get the credentials and plug it into um, Coolify. And you can figure that under S3 storages, which I'll show you in a second. And then you can go back to your database backups, check S3 enabled if you have an existing one, or you can just create it with S3 enabled um, from the add page. And then select the one you want to do your database backups to. And so let me show you this. Um, so like um, here in S3 storages, here's my HemiD backups. I'm not going to show you this because you know it has other information like the access key and stuff in it. Um, but I've configured this to basically connect to my object storage here so that Coolify knows how to access it. And then when I go into my database and go into backups um, here, I've clicked S3 enabled, and then I just tell it what storage should I use. Um, and I selected the one that I just showed you, which is equal to this, this Hetzner storage, and it's gonna do the backups. And we can see here that, you know, we, I showed you the backup availability is on local storage and it's on S3 storage. And the way to find this is basically it's doing this um, both locally and in my object storage. And so this path is the exact same. And you can see that here, well, I guess it's kind of hard to see that, but we can see that it's in, um, data, Coolify, backups, databases, my team, and then the actual name of the backup, or I guess the, the name of the, the Postgres, and then the, the name is here. And so now that I've done that, uh, just a few bits of configuration, you know, I have a very um, robust method for storing my backups pretty easily, um, cheaply. So yeah, I've been having a good time with Coolify and am frequently surprised by the nice utilities they built in. For example, I was looking at like Postgres backups and I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to build like an Ansible script for this or like, I don't know, use like PG backrest or, you know, some other thing. But then I was like, well, let me just see what Coolify has. And lo and behold, you know, they've already built this in, um, not only to do the backups locally, but also to upload to S3, which would have been more work on my part. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I think, you know, it really lives up to its promise of bringing the ease of cloud hosting to self-hosting which I think is one of the big blockers that a lot of people had, you know, from the age of serverless and stuff. But um, honestly, Coolify is making it pretty easy and, and pretty great. Now, I do use Hetzner to host my server and object storage because it's reliable and very cost effective. I should have put a link to my site, but I have a cloud compare up, which like links all of these. And you can see that just Hetzner in general just like destroys the competition um, in terms of like what you get for your money. And yeah, I'm, I'm like a frugal guy, so, so I enjoy that. And um, so I really like Kessner, I would definitely recommend. And you can sign up with my referral link to get $20 off uh, your cloud hosting. And then, you know, I get a $10 kickback from that. So um, pretty good for everyone. Now, if you like this post, uh, you might also like how to set up an HTTPS custom domain with Coolify. I'd also be interested in hosting my Docker containers on a VPS with Coolify as a platform as a service with GitHub auto deploys, which is basically how I'm using Coolify you know, as a cloud, even though I'm really self-hosting all of my servers. And then you might also be interested in the Hamstack, a simple scalable tech stack for building modern app web apps fast and cheap, which is more of a philosophy for how I like to build um, web apps these days. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.